Do you know the 10 hidden compensations of work camping at a campground? No? Well, stick around. We can talk about them. Hi, I'm Steve Turtle and I'm a work camper. It's a household name. This is a channel about Jill and me, our adventures, our travels, and a whole lot of work camper stuff. Now, if you're a work camper or you're dreaming to become a work camper, you should subscribe and ring that bell. If you ring the bell, you'll get a notification every time I post a new story. You don't want to miss one. Last week, we were talking about Millbridge Village Camp Resort, the review, the layout, the amenities, the activities, and what to expect when you get here. I'll show you the campsites and what's open and what's to do here in the Amish country. Now, if you missed last week's story and you'd like to see it, I'll leave a link right up there. This week, I'm talking about the 10 hidden compensations of work camping in a campground. Carl, he's gonna talk a little bit about the weather, sort of, and uh, I'm gonna bring you up to date on our camper project number five of three planned projects. But first, the weather with Carl, the not weatherman. You have seen the weatherman before, the less than accurate prediction of what the weather will be like for the next seven days. What if military intelligence officers gave briefings like weatherman predict the weather? So here's Carl as an army intelligence officer giving soldiers a briefing on the enemy situation on the battlefield. Now on Monday and Tuesday, you may have a couple of tanks and you cannot roll out a stray artillery piece in the evening, but your chances are slight. Wednesday could bring a few soldiers out of the north, a rear attack. It'll be one of those pop-up kind of things. Won't last long. Now on Thursday, we have a low pressure and there's a good chance we'll get a counterattack from the east. On Friday, that low pressure will push right out and a high pressure will develop. It'll be a hot and sticky situation, but there's little chance of enemy resistance. Then on Saturday and Sunday, a small cold front's gonna come through. There's a chance of rain, but it won't last long. And there is no chance of enemy contact. Okay, soldiers, that should be clear as mud. Now go on out there and kick some butt. To be honest, so far away, seven days, I have no idea what's gonna happen. Good luck. Who cares? So here are my 10 hidden compensations to work camping at a campground. I'm gonna start with 10 and I'll move my way up to one, the best hidden compensation. Ducks, to feed water and love. Normally working at a campground, they're gonna want you to work for about six months. That gives you time to have a little project that you couldn't do otherwise, like if you were at Amazon or the Beet Harvest. So Jill and I, before we started full-time RVing, we had a, a good sized piece of property and we had ducks and chickens and guineas and pigs oh my and uh, I just thought it'd be really fun to have a few ducks around. So I went and bought ducks. I raised them up and let them go and I, I don't know, I just enjoyed doing that stuff. Free coffee. Every day I go to work, I get a free coffee or a free water and I think that's pretty awesome and campgrounds do little things like that to compensate Work campers, I think that's a really nice thing, a nice gesture. And then my water bottle, once I drink that first water, I refill it over at the water fountain. I think that's good. Free stuff, you know, stuff that customers leave behind. Like energy drinks and ice. Charcoal lighter and charcoal. Sometimes campers leave things behind. Sometimes they forget. Sometimes they just don't want it anymore. So they leave it behind. Of course, if it's a, something of great value, we'll give them a call, send them an email, try to get in touch with them, check and see if it's something that they want to come back and pick up. Like these fishing rods. I've been holding on to these two fishing rods for about three months now, waiting for them to come back and pick them up. I have been known to dumpster dive from time to time. I believe in the old saying, one man's junk is another man's treasure. And I'm cheap. I once found a camper bumper rack in the dumpster. I dug it out, cleaned it up, modified it just a little bit. Now it's on the back side of my camper holding my generator. Now if you'd like to see that story, I'll put a link to that video right up there. And more free stuff. Sometimes when I'm out doing fire pits, campers leave their firewood, 
leave it beside their fire pit or half burnt. Either way, that's free firewood. Very generous of those campers when they leave. And a convenience store, just around the corner, usually within walking distance. Most campgrounds give you a discount. And you can buy all kinds of things. Sometimes groceries, like when you're in a pinch and need, you need a, a, a jug of milk or a loaf of bread or some hot dog buns. Stuff like that. A free VIP pass with lots of discounts to the local restaurants, shows, and buggy rides. Things like that. Did I say restaurants? Although this year, they didn't do it due to the Corona beer virus. But last year, they gave us a pass. It was a hospitality pass. So you go out and you see things that other people may be interested in. And when they walk into the campground, you tell them about it. Personal experience at those places. Well, we're halfway there. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Help a brother out. I sure would appreciate it. Helps the channel out too. And Carl says thank you. The shop. Most campgrounds have a shop, some sort of shop. Some are bigger and some are smaller, but they have something that you work out of. And it's great because you have a place to do projects, like this duck feeder I worked on for the ducks. Who else would they be for? Chickens? Now don't get me wrong, you can't just take advantage of the campground owners or the campground manager's property. Although in most cases, they'll allow you to use their stuff. Not their supplies, but their space and their equipment. But you should always ask first. Again, the shop. Use the tools, like a pressure washer, or a grinder, or a miter saw, things like that. Normally they do not mind if you use those tools. But again, always ask first. All right, we're getting close. Two more left. Working at a campground is normally a laid back atmosphere. It's a rewarding job and the campground owners or the managers usually make it fun to work there. Now, Jill and I, we've only worked for two campgrounds and they've been fairly small, not large campgrounds, where I understand it might get a little bit more corporate. Maybe a rigid feel, I don't know. I haven't worked there yet, but I'm gonna give it a try. But normally, it's a pretty laid back atmosphere. The work is hard, but the atmosphere is very good. Lots of people to talk to. Lots of friends drop by, and YouTube channels. Several have stopped by just to see us. Lots and lots of stories. Where have you been? Where are you going? What you been up to? Just on and on and on, story after story. Campground has a lot of them. Different people in every week. Get a different batch of stories. And it's really fun, and I enjoy it. And that is my number one hidden compensation to work camping at a campground. I just like to talk. <laughs> Jill says I'm always talking. Always talking. So here are some of the YouTube channels that have dropped by. Now go ahead and go over to their channel and check them out. Show them a little love. Watch a video. Make a comment. Punch that like button if you would. And let them know that you appreciate their channel and you appreciate what they're doing. All right, and this is in the order of how they showed up. Outdoor staycations. Opa and Oma's Camping Adventures. Keep on RVing. K Flan the Rail Fan. Camper Life. William. Bikes, Boats, and Bivouacs. They were just here this last weekend. We had a good chat and he's got a good channel. All of them have a good channel. So go over there and check them out and show them a little love. Watch a video, comment, punch that like button. Let them know that you care. Tell them Steve Turtle sent you. Well, that's my 10 hidden compensations. We're camping at a campground. Now, if you have an experience of a hidden compensation or something that you think you'd want to share, go ahead and leave me a comment down below in the comment section. I'd appreciate it. Okay, let's talk a little bit about our camper project number five of three planned camper projects. We're gonna do a dining room upgrade. It's all coming out. When we bought our travel trailer, we knew there were three upgrades that we wanted to do to make it better for us. We took a sliding door to the bedroom out and made it a swinging door from a hinge. We added a swivel bracket to the back side of our TV so we could see it better. And we added electric outlets to our slide out. Now, if you want to see those stories, I'll leave a link right up there. 
So now we're up to project number five of those three planned projects or upgrades, whichever ones you want to call it. So this is part one of the dining room upgrade. Now, you know, Jill and I, we're always tearing something up. So like I said before, it's all coming out. Today is demo day. I'll let Steve explain. So this is my workstation. It's a uh, TV tray and I just sort of sit there and it works out okay, but I don't know, it's, it's not comfortable. And uh, I sort of hang out in the middle of the road. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna change it up. And then around here, we're gonna take out that bench. We're gonna take out that bench. So here we go. Today is the demo day. And uh, I'm gonna just uh, basically unscrew everything. But I'm gonna try to be very careful not to break up too much. I wanna try to use as much as I can, <laughs> even the hardware. Now I will have to go out and buy a few pieces of board just to finish it up the way we wanna finish it up. But you know, you gotta spend a little money. But again, <laughs> I'm cheap. And this is the plan. The bottom will be storage, just like it was before, except no doors. I added a second level for additional storage to make up for losing the storage underneath the benches. And now we don't have to crawl on the floor to get stuff. On the top left will be an area for Jill's computer. And on the top right will be an area for me to do my work. The freestanding table will be put up against the shelves. Here's my workstation and here's Jill's workstation. Then underneath we will use storage bins, something like this, cloth with handles. They'll slide in and slide out. Jill will store her sewing stuff along the top and on the middle shelf. Well, that's our plan anyway. Next week, I'll give you an update and maybe we will be complete. Well, that's our story for the week. I hope you enjoyed this story. If you did, click like down below and smash that subscribe button if you'd like to hear more stories like this one. And leave me a comment. Comment about anything that you saw in this video that you did or did not like, or give me a little feedback. I appreciate it. it makes me feel good, or sometimes it makes me feel bad. It makes me want to do better. Well, that's our story for the week. If you like this story, I already said that. And ring that bell. If you ring the bell, you'll get a notification every time I post a new story. You don't want to miss one. Until later, thanks for your time. Bye.